I'm going to um, mostly read from um, my second book, which will be out next year in April. It's called The Big Book of Exit Strategies um, on Alex James again. Um, but I am going to read a poem from Hum. It's towards the end. Hum is um, anchored by these six phobia poems. Um, like I kind of used that as a structure because I was trying to make an argument for disparate things sharing space. So I kind of wanted poems to go all over the place but still fit, feel like they were in the same world. And so the phobias became like, the anchors that let me do that. Then there, it's kind of girded by these two sestinas where the six repeating words are from the six spheres. Um, so I'm just going to read the final phobia to appear in the collection, which is um, called macrophobia, a fear of waiting. Also known as just being impatient. <laughs> I love too many women is not a good lead in for a conversation that will end with me telling you I love you <laughs> for the first time. And this is probably not an ideal first date topic. I know this. The problem is I know it the same way 12-year-old me knew the firecracker in my hand would be a dull burst lost in the dirt if I let it go too soon. I am asking, are you like me? Do you let go too soon? Are you afraid more of having hands covered in ash than you are of getting the timing wrong? But this is stupid. But I was afraid to tell you, no, sorry, this is stupid, but I wanted to tell you that the stranger pushed the peppermint over my teeth, or my teeth with her tongue, told me she never wanted to step outside the listening range of my rambling, which meant a lot coming from someone who would never have to hear it again. <laughs> my plane had already boarded when the voice calling my name over the PA reminded me that I could not afford to wait for another flight. And ever since, I've been wondering what runway my hesitation would invoke next, wondering if it was bad timing to finally ask you for the dance I promised after you had already become a twirling body and clumsy hand spilling rum across someone else's shoes. I get it. You were tired of your life standing like a loaded gun. Every day with me, another hang fire. This weight is not foreign to any of us. This weight is my friend damaging blinds looking for his cliche of a father. This weight is a child with their foot pressed against the locked door of a closet. There is a woman waiting online in the rain holding two concert tickets and this is what rattles us, the space after the question marks, the blood work and CAT scans. What man faces a firing squad without eventually longing for its exit wound and this is stupid. But I was afraid to tell you that I kept fiddling with my phone through dinner because I was fascinated that every time I tried to type the word love, I missed the O, hit I instead. I live you is a mistake I make so often I'm beginning to wonder if it's not what I've been really meaning to say. And I wanted to say that there is space at the center of every firework Sorry, there's patience at the center of every firework I hear bloom from my balcony signaling the end of a tiger's game, but I can't see them. The second floor just isn't high enough, but the clouds above the taller buildings flicker, reflecting their light. So tonight, I'm going to watch that instead, make an evening of it. A dinner date with myself and a bowl of handmade guacamole from Honey Bee Market. And this time, I'm going to wait to find out if one, just one, can get high enough for me to see it explode. Perfume Mom. My mother became an ornithologist the moment a grackle tumbled through barbecue smoke and fell at her feet. Later, she explained why singers cage birds. It can take weeks for them to memorize just one wayward melody, the first since the first days are lost in a wash as they mope and warble the friendless tone every animal memorizes hours into breathing. It's the nail a bottle of cologne would sound if it were struck while something arcane was aligned with a planet that was even more mythic but farther away. My dad was an astronomer for 20 minutes in a row. The first time a bus took us so far away from street lights he could see clearly, point out constellations that may or may not have been Draco, Orion, Aquila, or Crux. When they faded, I resented the sun's excess, a combination of fires I couldn't even smell. 
He told me the first chemist was a star perfumer and her combination for Dizzy was brushed against pulse points so they couldn't lock when kissed by quickening blood. From stolen perfumes, I concocted my, sorry, from stolen perfumes, I concocted my own toxin. Like, like a toxin I could call my own, but learned it was no more deadly than the same amount of water to any creature the size of a roach. I grew suspicious of my plate and lighter Bunsen burner, the tiny vials accumulating in my closet. I was a chemist for months before I learned the difference between poisoned and drowned. When my bed caught fire, it smelled like a garden. As the saying goes, a bird in the hand smells like a human. A closed mouth gathers a storm of questions. A coward dies, a hero dies, a civilian dies, thousands of deaths. A fool and his money are soon pardoned. Children should be seen as a herd of elephant feet. If you can't beat them, beat them. Cold steel, warm slug, no guts, no voice, no bones. No news is good, nothing ventured, nothing stained burgundy. A gurney of a thousand screams begins with a single death. A thorn is a thorn is a thorn. Absence makes the heart grow maggots. All roads lead to gravestone. Not all that glitters fits into a jar. All's well that ends. April showers the graveyard with apple blossom petals. Any storm in a drought. Ask not what my country will do to you. Ashes and ashes and dust and dust and dust and ashes and dust. It shakes us still. After the Baptist retreat cartoons and health class slideshow insisted sex was only good for courting aids and babies and pustules, a fingernail traced across chest earthquakes us still. And the, heart, and the gods still build hearts like hearts in homeless shelters, a permanent place for the temporary to gather and liquefy the frost on their hands. An ungloved hand in winter slid under shirt shakes the ice free. No one believes me when I say his ten fingers together, no matter who they touch, are the smallest cult or choir gathered to worship the smallest demon or deity except for the pastor. This makes sense to him. The way animation always will to me, even at an age when time has hurled all its hand grenades at the imagination. And because this is where I learned the incorrect color of hearts and that giving a hug means taking one back. I'll always believe that the bodily destruction that waits for us at the bottom of a gorge is not stupid enough to try to kill the coyote and our blood that made us leap. Y'all wasn't gonna read a love poem, but then Eduardo <laughs> was like, uh, he made me think of this. Um, so he's talking about like, you know, like don't fall in love with a poet. Cause what, what was it? Um, they'll use your words beautifully against you. And brutally. Brutally, oh yeah, uh, it was dope. So what the secret is, if you do fall in love with a poet, is you gotta write shit that's so hot that it's too dangerous to like <laughs> do it. And so uh, my partner Tarfia Faizula, it's like, um, it's like my poems like have to like, like be like a warning shot, you know what I'm saying? And, then, and so it's like, you know, steel sharp and steel. So it's, um, it's actually um, can be a, like a really, really beautiful um, experience. We're trying to um, like kind of, maybe not destroy, but kind of undercut the notion of like the romanticism of like the conflagration type um, artistic relationship uh, of the 20th century, you know, where you just eat each other from the inside out. Um, but the trick of it is to like be in love with someone who is like as serious about the craft as you are. And I think that's where a lot of problems happen is you get like a mismatch sometimes. Like sometimes you get like this revered poet and then like the person that reveres them. And you know, you get like an imbalance. But um, I think in a relationship where you actually support each other and you actually want them to do better than you, then it can actually become the situation where like you're kind of sharpening yourselves. And I think and it made, when you said that, it made me flick flick. I was like, I was like dude, am I like writing better poems so Tarfia can't attack me in a poem later? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's just too risky, you know? It's just like, oh, that's just funny to me. 
Uh, so <laughs> this is a um, poem called, and, um, and actually just like a corny note about the first poem I read. Um, there's a, I feel like there's this phantom woman that run, that's in Hum, like kind of like in the background, like, hey, what's up? And, um, and, and people would ask me like, yo, who is that? And I would say, you know, it's kind of an amalgamation of things. I put lots of parts together. It's like, it's, a, it's not a p person. Um, but I felt like I'm like Tarfia was hurt. I just hadn't met her yet, and so that poem Macrophobia has like a whole different world for me now because it's like that was the firework I was waiting for or something. And I know that's corny, right? But um, <laughs> this is called "This Is How I Know It Might Work" after Matthew Olsman for Tarfia Faisula. Because your head is a rec room full of the best toys, and your second skull a crate full of the greatest records anyone can be ashamed of. <laughs> because you give good whiskey no quarter, because I want to be sober the next time I hold you, and because that is new, as is the need for roses with no mention of blood, and because I always mention blood, even now, okay, especially now that I'm mentioning roses, you still tempt me to hold them by the stem, because you cross all the roses out of my poems. Because you sang to me a song, made me a song that made no sense and didn't pretend it did. Because you insert roses into my poems. Play an instrument I've only heard through a laptop speaker when you were oceans too far. Because you are generous. Because you are greedy. Because you grab at all the voices you can lift, even the broken ones, especially the broken ones, and bury them under your hair until compositions grow. Because I want to remove the rain cloud over your head. I mean, I want to replace the rain cloud over your head, become your private storm. I like the way you carry a storm. Carry me, and I'll downpour for you and run my fingers through the garden of paper flowers. You make erupt perennial when the page is an empty field. And not even stillness will do. It's funny, she says. How many people are shocked by this shooting? And the next, and next, and the next. She doesn't mean funny as in funny, but funny as in blood soup tastes funny when you stir in soil. Stop me if you haven't heard this one before. A young man, old man, teenage boy walks into a theater, daycare, nightclub, empties a magazine to a crowd full of strangers, family, enemies, students. Ever heard of one about the shotgun? What do you call it when a shotgun tests a liquor store's bulletproof glass? What's the difference between a child with his hands raised in surrender and a paper target charging at a cop? What do you call it when a man sets his own house, house on fire, takes up a sniper position, and then waits for firefighters? Stop me if you haven't heard this one before. The first man to pull a gun on me said it was only a joke but never so much as smiled. The second said, this is definitely not a joke. And then his laughter crackled through me like electrostatic. It's funny how that works. When she says funny, she means funny as in crazy and crazy as in this shouldn't happen. This shouldn't happen as in something is off. Funny as in off as in. Ever since the small caliber bullet chipped his spine, your small friend walks kind of funny, and his smile is off. To be honest, the day did fine. I'm the one who donated the tip of my thumb to chopped onion and cilantro. <laughs> the room filling with the scent of singed hair from where the iron kissed my thigh is another creation on my own. The day did its best to fill my inbox with not so terrible news and then fill my memory with redolence. The day even turned down the train's rumble to nothing, hid all the pills, used my elbow to empty a bottle of bourbon in the car and managed somehow to keep them all, every single person I know alive for another 24 hours the constant calling from inside the grave mouth, barely a cold murmur for now. 
Um, and I just want to say, like, I'm so grateful for this opportunity. Um, like, this has been fantastic, like, you know, with students, like, um, like being here with these two fantastic writers. And also, all you guys um, being present. I mean, not just here, but, like, like present is what I've been thinking about lately. Because um, a lot of people, like, worry with our technological advances. They're like, oh, no, human connection will go away. And I don't really worry about it for the same reason that other people do. Um, it's, I know it's paradoxical, but people are afraid of it because it's so intrinsic and so valuable and so important that we like come together and like share in one thing together. And because of that, I don't think it's ever going to go anywhere. I think that's why in an age where we can do pretty much anything from our phone, <laughs> we we have more poetry readings in America than that's ever existed in any country ever. You know, and um, and so I'm I'm just really grateful for everybody for being um, present in this moment. So thank you for that. Um, and for my last trick. I'll slice the onions so thin they disintegrate against the cast iron black. No one likes this trick as much as the hoop of fire I used to jump through, but at least I don't get the shakes anymore. The burning gasoline smelled like the empty living room of our home going up. It was ridiculous of me to think anyone would see this as a metaphor for entering and exiting the center of a life that's always going up in flames. Existence is what I mean. I enter the loop, I exit the loop. Not touching the sides is my only accomplishment. But still, the gateway burns and the gateway shrinks, so I had to quit that ruse. The sizzling skillet, round and full of what I've cried over to dice is not metaphor for anything. It is only delicious, as all leaving things are. Thank you for listening, y'all. Huh?